Um, because I did, I don't know how many of you actually looked at the, um, the announcement slides that I put together from last week, but I did a live video, like going over all of them for 20 minutes and then it didn't work. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was so frustrated. So I just wanted to make sure and, um, cover a couple things that I really want you guys to know about. And I'm gonna go super fast through them, but I'm also gonna share these slides in our in our team page so that you guys can look through them on your own at your own time. A couple things. Um, I, this is new. I haven't shared this with you guys yet, but you know that I love doing Success Club prizes for our team, whether that's a special call. Last month it was a superstar diamond call, which was so good. Uh, this month I found these super cool this is gonna be a little bit cheesy maybe, but look at these bracelets. They're team Morse code bracelets. So for everyone who hits Success Club this month, I am gonna be sending you a little bracelet and I think it'll be cool. Like I, I kind of feel like we'll be like the superpower team. Like what's the um the show like from back in the day when we were growing up and they're like fire like that, you know what? Anyone? Power Rangers? Rangers. Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> like we could put our bracelets in together it's gonna be fantastic <laughs> um okay so that's for june um i wanted to make sure again you guys know this about me usually i work in pockets of time and so if i have things to catch everyone up on i do it all within five minutes and so there's like 20 posts from jessica in five minutes and then you guys can't find anything because it's facebook and I don't know how else to do it. Um, so I, this is why I'm like recovering a couple things. We're doing a summer strong flash sale with Dana's team and it's going to be June 18th and 19th. And then we're going to do a surprise, open it up for one more day on the 20th. We are going to be capitalizing on our $20 off all challenge packs and completion packs over $150. And then there's gonna be a raffle at the end for a $100 Amazon gift card. So for those of you who wanna participate and invite to it, if you could part, if you could pitch in 10 bucks, if you can't do 10, if you could do five, that's fine too. Just Venmo it to me. Um, her, she has 10 coaches at least who wanna do that as well. So what we're going to do, and this is for coaches to know, not to share with everybody, but just so you guys know the back logistics of it, we're gonna do a raffle on the 20th for the people who participated in the flash sale. And then we're gonna do another $100 Amazon gift card raffle at the end of the month. So that this is where we were, Dana and I were talking about like everyone's struggling. A lot of people are struggling right now with how to invite and how to show up and how to follow up in the midst of everything. So this is kind of our way of giving back and continuing to step up and be the light and the example in the world that people need us to be and um, offering just this really cool opportunity for people to plug into their health journey. So there will be a Facebook page with all the sales stuff in it that I'm gonna be posting today. But I wanted to make sure that you guys have that in the back of your head. Tonight I'm doing Emerald in a happy hour. <laughs> so creative. Uh, at five o'clock and we're just gonna kinda go over, this is for new coaches especially. Everyone's welcome the benefits of Emerald, um, and we're gonna do 25 invites on the call tonight. Like it's gonna be action hour, earn a hundred bucks in an hour, you get two people signed up, that's right around a hundred bucks. Um, we know about this, Coach Summit Week, make sure you're looking in your Coach Online office because it is this week, July 16th through the, well, it's, kind of vague a little bit about the schedule, but that's happening in July. And then we have our upline team, the next level pre-summit event on June 10th. And it's pinned at the top of our leadership page because there's some really special things that you can nominate people for, be nominated for, and be recognized for. The Emerald Diamond and Diamond recognition deadline is June 25th. Hey, Jessica. Yeah. Is that July 10th, I'm guessing? Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's today. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> and the one about
above, did you mean June or July? July. Okay. Yeah. Because then you said this month. And so I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is my brain. I just like to keep you guys on your toes. Um, so that's going to be really cool. The, the lineup of speakers and workouts and stuff that we're going to do for that is going to be really, really awesome. So, and then I'm reminding you guys, all the FAQs and the details are in your coach office, but the success club retention bonus is back. So everyone that you signed up in May that got you a success club point goes to your retention pool. You have to read through it or else it's going to be sound like complete gibberish, but the benefit of this is get them to keep ordering this month and next month. And you can earn success club points based on retaining them as an HD customer, retaining them as someone who's continuing to produce volume on your team. Um, the mindset menu is now up on Beachbody On Demand for those of you who didn't know. And I just read that Alana's book is now included with all to be mindset kits. And I thought that was so cool. I know. And I just saw that Adam is launching one too. So I have a feeling that they're going to end up including those as well, which is really awesome. The Weekender Kit just launched, which is super awesome for us to have as like samples. Or if someone wants to try, like I wish that they would have a package of Shakeology in there. Either way though, it's awesome for people to, <coughs> for us to order to have, um, as we're traveling or whatever, and to send people as prizes. And then Salted Caramel Shakeology launches on June 23rd. Make sure you have like 10 reminders set in your phone because I have a feeling this is going to sell out super fast. Uh, and I'm so freaking excited. Okay, so I'm gonna really bust through this because you guys should know, and I did recognition for this because this is back in May, right? Felisa killed it, hit diamond, and SE22, and built your husband's account to Emerald. So I'm so proud of you. Um, you guys, like, look at all the people on the board. I'm so proud of you guys. We had 83 new lives changed in May, which is really amazing. Super proud of you. Volume rock stars, you're doing amazing. Jamie locked in success starters, which is so awesome, which is so huge officially and i hope i'm not remembering this wrong but i'm pretty sure she's the first one in our entire team to do that since i started um so and since they changed the um qualifications of it and then felisa locked in month one and sarah ambler also locked in month one as well you can read these later so many of you are so close to diamond i'm cheering you on i will update this today Fall Leadership Retreat, don't forget about this. July 9th, hit Diamond, and we're going to hold it together for six weeks for our September Leadership Retreat. I'm going to just let you guys go through these on your own. And now, without further ado, because this is really why you're here, we get to learn from Danny, And I know that you guys are so excited, just as excited as I am. She's going to talk to us about how to hit high SC numbers each month. Um, Danny like blows my mind and she's so inspiring i met her first in portland and <clears throat> when we went to Vito's um <coughs> leadership event sarah and i went and rachel went with us um and it was so awesome and danny was like the cutest coach i have ever seen in the least creepy way possible and she was talking I, she did a presentation on like the roadmap to diamond and it had like all of these rainbows and sparkles and disney and i'm like this is amazing like i'm not obsessed with disney but she makes me want to be so i am like so excited for us to learn from her she just locked in elite for this year which is huge huge and i've just loved kind of just watching her as she's really learned to pivot right and she's really stayed consistent with the things that she knew was going to grow her business and this did and she'll be the first to tell you and we chatted before this call it did not happen overnight it's been a compound effect of consistent effort and consistent resiliency even when you're not seeing the fruit of your labor but you have your vision and your belief so intact that I am going to be successful. And if you follow her on social media, I am going to be a six figure earner. I am doing this. Like I am. And I think that's one of the a huge um, asset to her. So six star diamond coach, one star in her second CBC, 
2019-2020 premiere, Success Club All-Star Legend. I'm going to stop talking. Danny, give us all of your golden nuggets. Hi guys, I'm so excited. I'm sorry I'm so ugly. Normally I get ready for calls, but uh, Chloe was like, let's work out. And it was 8.13 and I was like, uh, okay. So uh, we worked out and by we, I mean me, she colored why I died doing lip cardio. Um, she did like two of the moves, so I guess that counts. But <clears throat> anyways, so uh, if you haven't listened to my national wake up call from three weeks ago, I would do that. So I'm not going to share my story on how I got started. You can go listen to that on the podcast. Um, but I do want to kind of just give a little insight to how I run my business and just the way that I approach my business. And I've had a lot of people be like, you do it so uniquely, even though I'm doing the same things that everyone else is doing, right? So I think that's kind of the way that we find success in this business. Because if you lined up all top 10 coaches, right, they're all insanely successful but none of them do the same thing. So I think the best thing that you can do in this business is find your unique voice, mission, purpose, passion, and share that real, raw, and authentically with people because that's what's going to draw people to you. Because at the end of the day, there are 450,000 coaches. At the end of the day, people can literally go to Amazon and buy beach body DVDs if they wanted to, which is asinine to me, but whatever, that's here, neither here nor there. Okay. I'll talk to Carl about that at leadership. <laughs> okay. But why are they going to choose you? Like if I was to ask you right now to drop in the chat, what are the three reasons why someone should choose you over another coach? What would those three be? Mine are I'm consistent AF. I am never going to quit. And I am going to support them through and through and through. I'm never going to give up on them. Okay. So why are your three reasons that somebody should join you? And if you don't know, that might be your problem right there. You might be doing all the right things, but it might be your lack of belief in yourself that's causing you not to see the success that you are so desiring, right? Um, and for a long time, I really had a limiting belief that I wasn't a good leader because I was the only one on my team having success. It was really easy for me to hit success club in high numbers, right? Not just squeaking by with six. It was really easy for me to do that. It was easy for me to bring on coaches, right? I was rank advancing. I was going diamond, right? Um, getting a one star, two star, now six star. Like why was my team not having that same success? So for a long time, I kept telling myself, I'm incapable of helping others find success in this business. And so guess what happened? <laughs> My team wasn't having success, right? So I literally spent at least two years only listening to leadership-driven books. Literally, The Energy Bus, The Power of Positive Leadership, anything from John Maxwell, um, John Gordon, like um, anything that had the word leadership in it or about it, that's all I listened to, and I would listen to it on repeat. Uh, the Go-Giver especially is my favorite book ever. Um, as far as personal development, it's a great gut check to remember why you're doing this because this is a we thing it's not a me thing um and i tell my team that all the time so you know two thursdays ago when we went six star everyone's like it's your day it's your day it's your day and i was like no this is our day because without you guys i'm literally nothing and so i just had to keep telling my team that that this is about us. Elite isn't about a title that I'm gonna get or a party that I'm gonna get to go to. Elite means that I'm bringing on new women and helping them find success. That's what the entire program is. If you cannot help others be successful, you cannot be an elite coach. And that's the bottom line. So for us to be an elite team, that means that I have to help as many people as I can as quickly as I can, right? Because you only have that small window that people can earn points for the team. So it's a lot about mindset in how I run my business now compared to when I first started. It was very much me, 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 me. What can I get? What accolade can I get? What prize can I get? How much money can I make? And I really had to do a total shift and figure out why it felt easy for me, but felt so hard for other people. And really, it just boils down to mindset and belief in this business. So giving back to my team, instead of saying, hey, I need you to hit Success Club, literally like, this is my exact invite. 
this is what I say when someone asks me this. These are the graphics I'm using. This is the group I'm inviting to. This is how many invites I'm sending. This is the book I'm doing. Literally sharing and showing my team exactly what I'm doing to the smallest minute detail. And then when they start disappearing, checking and say, hey, how are your invites going? Hey, how are you? How can I support you today? That is a huge thing on my team. I say, how can I support you today? Right? And a lot of times I'll ask them, what, where do you need my support? How can I help you? Right? And it'll be a different answer from everyone. Everyone's like, can you check in on me? Can you, uh, you know, if I don't text you by nine o'clock, can you ask me to see my tracker? You know, and everyone's different. Some people are like, I'm really great. I feel really supported by you already. Right? So it's going to be different from everyone. But once I had that shift of showing my team versus telling my team, things really started to take off. And th again, this is not like yesterday. This is like three years ago. <laughs> so this has been like a long time coming. Um, but I kind of came out the gates running. I mean, my first month, which was only two weeks because I did nothing for the first two weeks because I freaked out. But after I got started actually and made my first freaking awful post, I know there was a baby over there, so I'll try not to use the F word, even though my baby's right there. She doesn't care. <laughs> Well, it's all no judgment zone here in this house, right? Uh, anyway, so um, I made my first post. It was terrible, but I got moving. I hit Success Club 12. And then I hit Success Club 20. And then I hit Success Club 30. And then I hit 40. And then the month of White Diamond, I hit 50, right? And that was just my trajectory my first year as a coach. And along the way, I kind of got in this mindset of like, I'm going to run out of people. And so I started only hitting like 10 each month. And then I would stop inviting. Or if someone messaged me on the last day of the month, I would ignore them and wait and message them until the next morning and say, oh, I just saw this, right? I got into that scarcity mindset of like, I'm, how am I going to keep doing this, right? Which I think a lot of people do. But whatever you tell yourself is your reality. So when you tell yourself there's a scarcity of people, there absolutely is, right? You're sending invites. No one's responding. Everyone's saying no or you're getting rude messages back, right? So how you talk to yourself about what you're doing is exactly what you're gonna get in this business. So I literally had to start telling myself, hardworking women flow freely to me. I am recruiting star diamond coaches and above. I am a million dollar earner with each body. And I say, I am a million dollar a year earner with each body, right? Um, abundance is all around me. And I know sometimes that seems really silly. And when I say it to myself in the mirror, I laugh every time because I just feel like an idiot. But I'm telling you, the words you feed yourself is going to affect the actions that you take. So if you're consistently telling yourself, nobody wants to sign up, everyone ignores your messages, you're incapable of helping others find success, that's exactly what you're going to find. And then you're going to justify why this didn't work out for you. But really, in the end, it was just the way that you talk to yourself. So if you told yourself that everybody wants to do this, because they do, because it's freaking awesome, right? Hardworking women flow freely to you. You are capable of helping people find success because you have, right? My methods are tried and true. And every time my coach starts seeing success and they're like, oh, I just did exactly what Danny told me to do. And I don't say that to flex, but it's like, if you're coachable, and you listen to others who have had success, you will find success as well. And the cool thing about it is you can do it in your own special, unique way. And that's what I try to tell my coaches. I don't want a cookie cutter version of me, right? I don't want a copycat of me. Just do the same behaviors, but in your own special way. And I have coaches whose stories and feeds are 10,000 times more beautiful than mine, right? And sometimes I'm like, dang, like she's new and she's like using all these cool apps. I know. And it's like, I, and I have to take a step back. Like there's no comparison here, right? Hers is effective. Mine is effective. That's more on point to her brand. I'm more about done is always better than perfect, right? Because I don't really care. Why am I going to spend three hours putting together three workout clips? Like that's not what gets people in the door, right? It looks beautiful. Yes. But likes and followers does not equate to money in the bank, okay? So for me, done is always better than perfect. So I will keep doing what I'm doing until I need to shift. And if I decide I wanna get better at that, then I will. But for me, I'm only going to pour a ton of time into mentoring and into the activities that move my business forward. 
So I think we're always worried about like the aesthetics and the look. And I, and I do have a little bit of strategy with that, right? But I'm not so worried about it. Because when I start posting and acting and coaching the way I think people want me to, I've lost my vision, I've lost my passion, right? That's not gonna build me a business that I am proud of. So at the end of the day, I always have to lead with what feels good to me and do that no matter what people say, oh, you shouldn't post at that time, you shouldn't post this many times a day, your story shouldn't be that many lines, you shouldn't talk that many times in a row. I'll talk as much as I damn well want to. If you don't wanna listen, swipe on through, okay? Don't need you, don't want you, bye-bye, right? Like if I have something I want to say, I'm going to say it. And I'm not going to try to limit myself to four stories because people say nobody wants to hear you ramble. Um, well, then I guess we've lost all humanity, right? If we can't even listen to what others have to say, like it's pathetic. Like social media has made us the least social people ever. It's insane, right? So let's make it fun again. Let's make it social again. Let's get a conversation going. Let's talk about things, right? Okay. So as far as... Um, Hitting high success club numbers. Again, I got in that scarcity mindset and I allowed myself to stay there for a long time. And then when new coaches would come on and kind of like seed me, I found myself getting really jealous, which I am a leader of leaders. So I'm fine to be exceeded, right? But again, it was all my mindset, right? I don't want to be a leader of followers. I want to be a leader of leaders. So it's okay if people exceed me, but I'm also type three. So now I never let anyone beat me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's okay if they do. But around 2017, um, when they did that November to Remember contest, I was just kind of skating by, right? Like 8, 10, 12, 14, you know, and I knew I was capable of more. But again, I was in that scarcity mindset. But I'm like, okay, I've been, hey, Petey, I've been a coach for two years now, and I'm still a one star diamond, even though I went diamond in four months. That is your bar. She's like in this like show and tell phase. She is not going to be shy when she gets to school. Like she's going to be like, look at this. I'm like, okay. They see your bar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so November to Remember came around and I paired up with one of my PS's PS because I saw a lot of potential in her. Right. And I'm like, sometimes, you know, in the very beginning, I was only focused on my PS because of what it would do for me right? But that's not how you're going to build a strong business. A strong business is built with depth, not with, okay, got to be quiet when I'm talking, okay? And so I reached out to this PS of a PS and I was like, hey, do you want to be my partner for November to remember? She was super nervous. She's like, I don't want to disappoint you. I'm like, you'll never disappoint me. Just try your best, right? So I ended up hitting Success Club 45 that month and she ended up hitting Success Club 16, which was her best ever as a coach. Like she wasn't a consistent Success Club hitter, but I saw a lot of potential in her, right? She's actually hitting one star tomorrow, so it's very exciting. But anyways, um, and we just checked in with each other every single day. Like anytime we sent out a share cart, we're like, oh, share cart, right? Like sent it out. And really working with somebody who actually wanted to run reignited my fire because the women that I was bringing in were very scared, very timid. Nobody was hitting success club consistently. My leaderboard had like four names on it. I was the only one in success club every month. It was really daunting. And, and honestly, I wasn't finding a lot of joy from it. And we won, we won November to remember. So we each won a thousand dollars, which was really cool. Right. Um, and that just kind of like showed me like you are capable of anything I get that you have that if you're willing to do the work and from then I don't think I've hit besides the month I had Chloe I don't think I've hit less than 20 since that month because I just decided that I was just gonna go full force with this and not limit myself on how many people I could help or how many people I could get started with our team. Now, obviously I've had tweaks along the way and some months are harder than others, but I truly believe there's no hard months. There's just bad attitudes. Okay. So when people are like, Oh, it's so hard as the holidays. I'm like, that's weird. I'm at success club 50. So really again, what you tell yourself, okay. What you tell yourself is what you're going to find. So for me, there's no hard months. Okay. When I was a brand new coach, a top coach at that time said, you got to hit Success Club 10 by the 10th. 
And I am a very black and white person. If it's a rule, I'm going to follow it. So that has been my thing since I signed up as a coach, right? Now there's been some months where it's like the ninth and I'm at eight or I'm at six, right? But typically by the 11th or 12th, I have that 10 locked in. Now that I've gotten so good at that, now I'm six by the six, 10 by the 10th, 20 by the 15th. That's my goal for myself, right? And typically a lot of times I'm at 10 now by the six or whenever, right? But so I have been able to continually improve what I'm doing because I allowed myself to get really good at something out, at something smaller first. So a lot of times coaches will come in and they think helping three people is the hardest thing in the world. And then guess what? It ends up being the hardest thing in the world. So then they tell themselves that's their limit. That's all they're capable of. And then that's all they do. And then they wonder why they don't have these big successful businesses like everyone else. And I get it. I have used, well, I've been a coach this long. I should be here. And really in this business, time means nothing. And we have been proved that over and over and over again by people coming in and their superstar top tens in one year, two year, right? Or they're making six figures their first year as a coach, or they've gone elite every year they've been a coach, right? Or they're literally Kelsey Hill, 26 months and youngest superstar diamond in the company history. She's like 23, like wild, right? When I was 23, I was a freaking mess. <laughs> okay. So anything is possible in the business if you just make the decision that that's what you want. So for me, Success Club 40 every month is my non-negotiable and I don't miss. Okay. So you decide what number you want to help every single month and then you work until you have that done. So I'm not going to tell you, you have to send X amount of invites. I don't send the same amount of invites every single day. And I don't send a ton. Like I'm not like 50 a day, 70 a day. No, I'm like 20, 10, five, if I'm being super lazy. Right. But I am consistent as consistent gets in my social media presence and my messaging. And I do not let a day go by that I do not talk to somebody about joining me in some capacity. So there's not a day where I'm just like, oh, I just didn't feel like working today. That doesn't happen, right? And if people can trust you, then they will join you faster. But the problem is people think they can put up one post or one boomerang a day and all these people should come running to them. And in five years, I've never woken up to an inbox that's flooded with messages of people like banging down my door trying to join me. But yet I still hit Success Club 40 plus every single month. I, I try to go diamond again every single month. So eight new coaches and I help two of those coaches go emerald. And I'm pretty freaking on point with those things because those are my, that's my line in the sand. Like nothing less than this. And that's going to get me to the goals I have. Oh, what is that? You decide what your goals are. If you're, if you're just trying to get to Emerald, you obviously don't need to bring in eight coaches a month, right? But zero is never good. Zero will never be celebrated. Zero will never move you forward. Okay. So decide what your number is of who you want to help and how many each month, right? And, and make sure that aligns with the goals you set. If you're like, I'm going to be two star by the end of the month and you're only going to bring in one coach a month, those don't line up, right? So a lot of times we have these huge ambitions and then you're like, okay, well, I'll invite three people a day and I want to be, you know, superstar diamond by the end of the year. That probably doesn't work out. So you got to match your ambitions with your efforts to hit the goals that you want. So for me, I know that a day can't go by without putting all those things that I talked about on my story on the national wake up call in my story every single day, because I need people to know that I'm serious, that I'm a business and that I'm never going to give up on them. Right. That was my third reason why people are going to do that. So if I start slipping and stop showing up and stop showing workouts and stop posting, guess what? Each person following me is probably following another four to 10 other coaches. So if that person is consistent in their feed, who are they going to sign up with? Not me. Not me if I'm skipping days, not showing my workouts, not talking about my shake anymore, not talking about new products coming out, things like that. 
And it's fine to talk about that because I am running a business. Social media is my job now. I think people are like, oh, it's icky. I don't want to be icky. You don't have to be icky. I'll get that for you. Yeah. You don't have to be icky to run this business. But guess what? Carbon38 just sent me an email about new arrivals and I really want them. So I'm really happy that they sent me that email and let me know that they have new products that I want. So your people are following you for a reason. That might not be why they started, right? But they are following you for a reason. So if they're in your business, invite them to your business. Okay? If they're in your business, aka following you, watching your content, literally in your house, seeing your kids, it's okay that you invite them to join you on this journey, right? Like we forget how personal social media is. People are seeing my daughter in her bed. They're literally in my house. I think it's okay if I invite them to join me. There's nothing icky about that. This changed my entire life. I get it to be home with her because I get to work from home. Like, that's a big thing. I'm not going to miss a day. And I had this great conversation with my coaches. Okay, what if instead of $15.95 a month that you paid, you had to take out a $160,000 loan? How would you work your business differently? And the chat was like, Brr, wake up earlier, send more invites, have more structured business hours, not go to bed until the tracker's done, all these things. And I'm like, why don't you do that now? So why is that only going to happen if you have something huge to lose? Instead, why don't you see how much you have to gain and do that same work anyways? What if you thought of it like that? Because instead of owing the bank $160,000, you could be making $160,000 with this business. If you did all those things, you just put in the chat. So for me, showing up every single day is a non-negotiable. Showing my energize every morning, three to five clips of my workout, showing my Shakeology and or recover. Oh, you can have that. Yeah, it's like if you want people to not have objections about Shakeology, they need to see you drinking it. And not just a, got my shake. Like nobody knows what that is, okay? Show them how you're making it. Talk about the benefits of it for you, not what it says on the bag, right? Because what it says on the bag isn't necessarily true for you. Like everyone's like, oh, it keeps me so full and curbs all of my sweet tooth. I'm like, it keeps me full for like 30 minutes and I'll still eat a cookie while I'm drinking it. Like that does not happen for me, right? But it gives me a ton of energy. It really, really helps me make me feel good. So everyone's going to have a different experience. So are you sharing that with people? Do they understand why you're drinking it? Okay, I'll get that for you. Right? It's like you have to make people make it crystal clear for them why you're doing what you're doing. And of course, there's going to be naysayers and haters along the way. Who freaking cares? They're not on your bus. Worry about the people who are on your bus and how can you make it so clear to them what you are doing and why that they can't help but want to do it too. And I think I've done a really great job at that. I literally had a girl from high school message me last night. And she's like, I just have to tell you your perseverance with life and cheerleading and beach body. She's like, it's so inspiring. She's like, you're the definition of a girl boss. And she owns her own business in Florida. Her and her husband both own their own businesses, right? Like there was no reason for her to tell me that. Like super sweet, right? Thank you so much for sharing those kind words with me. But if somebody who's not even a customer of mine or a coach on my team sees that, that's what everybody should be seeing because that's what's going to attract them to join you. So again, that all goes back to belief. I believe in this so much. My stepson, who lives in our casita, which is a detached fourth bedroom, he's lost a hundred freaking pounds since July from our programs and drinking Shakeology every single day. A hundred pounds. That's three of Chloe. Like, unreal, right? Nobody can tell me that this doesn't work. Obviously, I've seen it in myself, right? Which you should see it in yourself as well. But I'm seeing the ripple effect of my yes. So how could I possibly not talk about this all the freaking time? Because it's amazing what's happening. On Thursdays, oh, that's good. You have that. on Thursdays, when girls are texting me with the crying emoji, I just got $500 deposited in my account. 
I just cycled seven times. I just got the biggest team bonus cycle I've ever gotten. Oh my gosh, my husband just got his first team bonus cycle. Like, that's real. That's real. So why wouldn't I be sharing all of this with everybody who's in my business? That doesn't make any sense. And it's because our ego tells us that we're annoying, that we've talked about it too much, nobody wants to hear it, nobody wants to do it. I'll tell you, your ego has no place in this business. So you gotta leave that ego at the door because your ego will tell you don't send that invite. Oh, that's cute. Your ego will tell you don't send that invite. Look at that face. But if you let your ego win, are you any better than you are right now? You have to do the work if you want this to happen, okay? So every person that you admire in this business, let their ego go by the wayside. <laughs> they just didn't care anymore what that ego told them, okay? Anyways, so my social media strategy is show up every single day. I share those nine things in my um, story, which is energized, three to five clips of workout, Shakeology, um, a boomerang of some kind. Instagram rewards you for using um, their features, okay? I do an invite in my story every single day. Every single day. I don't miss. Take this poll, take this quiz, drop an emoji, fill out this question box with your email. I switch it up, right? Well, I like to give people different options. Go to the link in my bio. And I only give them one option each day, but I, I switch it up, right? So if I do a poll a couple days in a row, then I'll do a link in bio the next day kind of thing, right? Or maybe even a swipe up, whatever, right? Give them that um, personal development every single day. Mental health is huge. There's a lot of people you could help just from the mental health side, right? So showing people, hey, it's my job to work on this, okay? That's my job. People will be attracted to that right? Because a lot of people's jobs is the reason why their mental health is so bad, okay? So the, now they can have a job that will actually help them. So sharing those things. Again, make it crystal clear what your job is. If people are confused and watching you, that's why they're not joining you, because they're confused on what you're doing. They might see you dancing around with your energize, but they don't understand how, that, how they can monetize that. So are you making it crystal clear to them? Um, hashtag coach life every single day. Show people when you're working. If you want women who want to work, they have to see you working. If they just think you dance around in your kitchen, you're not going to attract high achieving women who want to make this into a real business. Okay? So showing all those things in your story every single day. And for me, I take everything back to being a coach. Why? Because I want coaches. Customers are wonderful. Yes. But I want hardworking women to join my team because it's cool to help somebody lose weight. It's even cooler to help somebody lose weight and be able to pay their bills. And they can't do that as a customer, but they can do that as a coach, okay? So I want hardworking women to join the team. So I have to show that I am a hardworking woman running a team that they have the opportunity to join. So for me, if I'm working out, if I'm drinking Shakeology, if I'm reading personal development, if I'm doing anything, team calls, anything, it's because I'm a coach. It's because I'm a coach. I'm not doing it because I like fitness. I mean, I do. I'm not obsessed with it, but right? I'm doing it because I'm a coach, because it's my job. It's my job to read this book. It's my job to be on this call. It's my job to help these people. It's my job to show up on social media, right? But I also have a lot of fun with it, right? So it's not a chore for me. It's not a chore for me. I have fun with it. So you have to find a way to find the joy while still showing everybody what you're doing, again, crystal clear, and then giving them the opportunity to engage with you in conversations about that and get information about that, okay? And then as far as feed, because you can't just post in your stories, <laughs> I like a lot of new coaches think like you can just post some stories. If I go to your feed and the last thing you posted was a flower in August, 2016, like that's not going to work out, right? You got to post on your feed because the first thing that opens in the app is the feed. Not everyone watches stories. Okay. Not everyone listens to stories with sound on. Okay. You have to post in your feed and be proof that you are not going anywhere, that you are serious about this. So aesthetically speaking, my feed is fitness, lifestyle, fitness, lifestyle. 
But if you read the captions, every post is about coaching. You don't have to be that gung-ho. I am that gung-ho, right? And everyone does it differently. But again, I'm not going to miss the opportunity to help somebody get started. Because not everyone watches stories. Not everyone listens with sound on. But they might read a post and then follow the call to action on that post. But aesthetically speaking, if someone's just looking at me, they don't think I'm all fitness all the time. Because I have lifestyle pictures in there with my family and other things that I'm doing and other things that represent my five roles in life. Okay? But caption-wise, all roads lead to coaching, baby. Let's get signed up. Okay? So again, I'm relentless in my pursuit of getting people started. And then talking about that and how I'm going to help them and how I'm going to serve them to help them do this business. Now, if you're a brand new coach, you just talk about you want people to do this with you because it's more fun to have friends doing it with you. I'm five years in. I've earned the right to say I can mentor you to help you build this business. Okay? I never said that before. Right? But now the language that I'm using is the language my coaches are using. So when they're talking on their stories, they're like, my mentor is helping me, right? Which they tag me in and then I share, which just boosts my credibility. So my followers are seeing all that. So you use the language that you want your coaches to use and I promise they will follow suit. But if your business isn't moving, it's not because of who you brought in, it's because of you. And we have to remember that. So if you ever feel stuck in the business, Take a step back and say, am I being the type of coach that I hope to recruit? And if the answer is no, that's where you need to start. So I hope to recruit women who bring on eight coaches a month, hit Success Club 40, and help at least two coaches a month go Emerald. That's who I'm hoping to recruit. So that's who I had to become. Okay. And again, it's all mindset. There's no shortage of people. One billion people a day use Instagram. One billion. And people are like, where are you finding all these people? I'm like, they're literally right there. Like, right, right there. You see them? Like, they're not under rocks. Like, they're right there on your Instagram, on the Explore page, following the same blogger you do, following the same accounts you do, right? Going to the same coffee shop you do, the same pumpkin patch. They're everywhere. No shortage, okay? No shortage of people. So you decide how many people do I want to help each month? Does that align with the goals that you have? So again, if you're like, I'd love to help one person a month. Well, that's nice, but that doesn't even cover your monthly products, which means you're paying into the business. So you're not profitable. You're not hitting success club, which means you're not earning a prize. You're not earning trips you are missing out on opportunities to show people why they need to do what you're doing. If you're only helping one person. And every life matters, yes. Every life you help matters. But you have to have goals for yourself, not based off what you think you can do, but that you actually want. So a lot of times we set goals because we think we can only help one or three people a month, when really, you could help as many people as you wanted to if you told yourself you could. But you tell yourself, oh, well, I could probably help one. That would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> Unfortunately, hard work and nice, those two things don't really match up, right? It would be nice if I earned a million dollars from Beachbody. Yeah, that would be nice. But it's only going to happen if I put in the work to do that. I don't know how long these calls are. Uh, <laughs> I can talk for like three hours, um, but if you guys have questions, I mean, that's essentially it. Have a good mindset. Talk positively to yourself. Know there's no scarcity of people. Show up consistently on your social media with your five roles. To, you figure out what those are, right? For me, it's wife, mom, coach, Disney, friends, fashion. Those are my roles. Disney and friends are kind of combined, right? Those are my favorite things in life. Those are the things I care the most about. That's what I'm going to show up with, okay? You're not gonna see me hiking or holding a snake. That would never happen. Like, those are not my roles. I'm not gonna be doing those things. So I'm gonna stick to my roles and I'm gonna show up consistently with those things. And that's how people are gonna get to know me and how they're gonna get to know me. And then they're gonna be able to trust me and then they're gonna join me. 
All right, does anyone have questions? Oh my gosh, this is so freaking good. I, like, I feel like we could just do a mic drop. Um, but Lisa had a question on what your tips are for how to find new people to connect to. Um, so I typically just go to large accounts that I follow, mainly bloggers. Um, when I first had Chloe, I would go to all the brands of the baby items that I was using. Um, so her little moccasins, freshly picked, Disney baby, um, you know, rags to riches, any kind of brand that she was wearing. And I would follow those moms and I don't go to their page. I don't scope them out. I literally, if I like their little bubble, I'm like, follow, 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 follow. It's really easy to unfollow someone versus spending five, 10 minutes scrolling back to 1996 to make sure they're not a coach. Like, I, like I'll figure out if they're a coach real quick, right? So if I like their little bubble, I just follow. And then if I see in my feed, they're like doing their energized dance, I'm like, oh shit, and then I just unfollow, right? That's a lot easier and wastes a lot less time. And then I'm able to add those new people and then start engaging with them. So yeah, I used to spend so much time scrolling through every photo album watch it like such a waste of time and then it'd be 30 minutes and you followed like three people i'm like this is not working okay if their bubble looks good and they don't look like a psycho like woo, let's go right like let's follow okay and again i'm only following people that i feel like they're women that i would actually be friends with in real life like if they don't have an actual picture not following them because that's weird why don't you have a real picture up there okay so you decide who you want to follow and then you follow those people I love that and totally agree. I do the same thing. <clears throat> um, Slisha asks, do you always DM to engage with people or comment on their poster stories or is it different for people? Like, how do you connect with them? Um, so I make sure that I do both. Uh, on my tracker that my team uses, uh, laminated, save some trees. Uh, so it says show interest in your followers. And then it has these little numbers here. Like you decide how many you want to do. Like the minimum should be 15, but you kind of decide. I think story uh, replies are the best way to engage because then you have that like built up conversation. So then it's not necessarily weird to send them a message. Again, if I've never talked to you, I will still invite you. So let, let's not beat around the bush with that. Um, but I do also make it a note to go to uh, my feed and comment on at least 15 right so um because some people are really active on their feed and then some people are really active on their stories so it kind of just depends on the person so if somebody is posting every single day in their feed i'll be commenting there but then maybe they do like one story a week so you can't really engage with their stories so it just kind of depends so I, I definitely do both though every single day awesome and then Rebecca asks, um, I know that you shared, and this is back on Danny's National Makeup Call recording, but your nine things that you post in your stories every day, is there a certain, you told us that you alternate fitness lifestyle, fitness lifestyle, bring it all back to coaching. Is there a specific schedule that you follow for your actual Instagram posts or that you give to your new coaches when they're just starting? Like, hey, this is how you should set up your Instagram posts for the week. Uh, yeah, so I tell my coaches on their GSR a great balance because a lot of people come in thinking now all they post about is Beachbody and I'm like, that's a quick way to get people not to follow you, right? So again, aesthetically speaking, because most people are going to judge you based off of how your last nine squares look, aesthetically speaking, my feed should be fitness, lifestyle, fitness, lifestyle. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I post two pictures in a row in workout clothes, like, oh my gosh, right? Sometimes that happens, right? I just didn't get ready for a couple days. I don't have a picture to post that's a lifestyle picture, right? Um, or it just doesn't fit my mood for that moment. Again, I try not to follow like too many rules, but aesthetically speaking, I just try to go back and forth and I tell them the same. But again, for me, every post I'm talking about coaching in some way, shape or form, because I want people to see that this fits into my life. It's not coaching and then regular life. No, it's, it's one thing that's just part of my life because I am a coach. That is part of my life. This is my full-time job, right? So, are you on a bike? Yeah. Right? So sharing those things. But for new coaches, I just tell them, go back and forth. Talk about your kids. Talk about your husband. Talk about your likes and things like that. But every other post needs to be, we need to know that you're on this fitness journey or your people are not going to join you, right? So a lot of people will come in, do that coming out as a coach post. And then three weeks later, it's just all pictures of their kids. And I'm like, kids are great, but they're not going to build you a business. Okay. 
I absolutely love that. And I love, if you guys haven't um, gotten this from Danny in the last 50 minutes, she is relentless and she's unapologetic. And I think that those are such incredible attributes when you are an entrepreneur. Like you have to have the belief in what you're doing and why you're doing it and that you can help people be successful. So I was going to ask you, Danny, when you have new coaches, because obviously at this point and where we're at, where we are at in our business, we have that confidence because of all of the failures that we've had before, you know, all the things that we've learned along the way. And when you have new coaches starting, how do you help them? develop I think it's there's some things that require a little bit of time and experience to develop that belief but how do you help them in the beginning to speak with that like unapologetic I am a part of Beachbody and I'm freaking so proud of it yeah so I always just remind them that people use social media however they want and that's kind of the freedom of having a social media account right like you can post as much as you want about your baby. You can post 17 pictures that literally nothing changed, but you couldn't pick just one, so you posted all 17, right? You can do that. You can post 300 wedding photos, and then every single day for the next year, you can keep posting those wedding photos. You can post however much you want, whenever you want, about whatever you want. I mean, for the most part, right? Um, so I just tell them, you are excited about this, can you just share your excitement? And from the beginning, that's all I did. I was just very excited about what I was doing. So I was happy to talk about it. Um, so if they're excited about it, they should be talking about it. Because if it was anything else, a T-Swift concert, they got a promotion at work, their husband changed from night shift to day shift, so now they're gonna be able to see each other and spend more time together, they got a new house, whatever, they would post about it because they're freaking excited about it. They have the opportunity to change their life and from their excitement will be a ripple effect to change others' lives. So they need to share that. And then I just make sure that they're just sharing their thoughts and feelings about what they're doing. So a lot of people are like, I don't know what to post. I'm like, do you have thoughts? Do you have feelings? <laughs> then you absolutely know what to post because your trainer is gonna say something in your workout that's gonna spark a thought. Or there's going to be a move that you hate that you want to die, right? Or there's going to be a move that last week you could not do on your toes and now this week you can. You need to talk about those things because people are more interested in the journey than they are the results. And that's just the truth, right? They want something to follow along with. So people are like, well, I want to wait until I finish a program. No, not acceptable. Like people need to see where you're starting and how you got there. If you wait until you get where you're going, you will miss out on all these people because guess what? You're no longer relatable to them because they're over here. They're not over here. And they don't believe that they can get here because no one has shown them how to do it. They just showed up one day and they were there. And so you have to be here, own where you're at, real raw, ugly, full body photos, no matter what you look like, right? Like own your journey. And that alone, people are like, I'm in, right? If she can do it, I'm in. Like just sharing those things. And, and, and the people that do that are the people that take off right away. And the people who didn't do that are sitting back like, well, it was just easier for her. No, she owned it. She used her excitement. She started posting right away, right? This is what I'm doing. It's not rocket science. It doesn't take a lot to inspire. It's just consistency. Amen. Okay, Nikki. Awesome. Um, Danny, thank you so much for everything. I am just wondering how you do the circle back. To coaching? Yeah, just with people that you've talked with. Oh, are you talking about following up? Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so I follow up until one of us dies. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you keep ghosting me. Like, I'm just going to keep sending you a message. Um, because you're following me, right? You're watching my stories every single day. You're interested in me in some way, shape, or form. So until you tell me like, hey, I love watching you, but I'm already in a beach body group, or I've got a great fitness regimen, or stop messaging me, which no one's ever told me that, I'm going to continue to keep following up with you, right? But I also have that consistency on my feed. I'm offering a new group every three weeks. I'm talking about my coach mentorship every single month. 
right? Like a lot of people who are on the fence will get off the fence because they see that, right? Or, you know, uh, I put up, I have a sneak peek tonight and then someone I invited that ghosted me for the last five months is like, hey, can I have the link for that? Right? But anyways, I will just keep following up. So if I send someone a message and they ghost right away, I wait one month to follow up with them. And it just depends on where they get lost in the process, right? So if it's like a, hey, I invite them and then they ask for info and then I give them info and then they ghost, I'll follow up like the next day. Hey, did you still want info? Or hey, uh, what did you think of that, right? Kind of thing. I never use the word interested. Interested commits people. <laughs> people don't like to commit to things. So I don't use the word interested ever. Um, I always ask if it's okay to give them info. Okay. <laughs> and then um, when I get to the part where I have prices for them, but they haven't necessarily asked, but I've already given them all the info, I ask, is it okay if I send over our current promotions for you to look at? Right? I'm very respectful in my message. I don't shove information down their throat. And I've had a lot of people that are like, I really like the way that you asked if it was okay. Yeah, sure. Send it over. I've always been curious kind of thing. Right. So even if they're saying no, they're like, thank you for asking. That was really nice. Because again, these people are in my business, but they didn't ask for any kind of information. So we've all gotten the message like, hey, girl, you want to join my toothpaste team? I'm a mom of three from Washington and I've made $20,000 um, in the last eight months. Like, bitch, I didn't ask for any of this. Like, get the hell out of here. Right. So it's nice to ask if it's okay before I shove info down their throat that they might not want. So if they're like, I'm good, thanks. I'm like, okie dokie. And then I just keep moving, right? Boom. Okay. And we Thank are you. at the top of the hour. Thank you, Danny, so much. This was freaking amazing. Thank you for spending the time with us. Thank you team for showing up. Um, I'll be posting this recording as soon as it's up. I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you guys. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.